Just as I thought me and Timmy were about to have a nice family vacation, things took a turn for the worst. Our plane lost power in all its engines and we were going down. And we weren't flying over the ocean. In fact, we were on our way over a mysterious island known as the Peninsula and crash landed in the southeast corner of the island. Once I finally came to, I saw a strange man covered in red paint about to kidnap my son. But I was too weak to stop him and he slowly walked away. Welcome to the forest where I spent the next hundred days trying to survive and rescue my son. I am Kruger Ops and if you enjoy this video, leave a like, consider subscribing and turning the bell on for future postings. Finally, I woke up, feeling disorientated, but I had the strength to get up. This also marked day one of the journey. I started searching around the plane for any valuable supplies, grabbed the manifest as well as had some food. I then found the aerostase on the floor and she still had the axe from the emergency door. This would definitely come in handy. So I started searching through some luggage gathering all the resources that could help me along my journey. And once I was fully equipped, I contemplated making a shelter or going to look for Timmy. I found a local village and went searching. Um, hello? Anyone seen my son? I found dissected passengers and quickly knew this was no ordinary camp. I spotted someone off in the distance and I was definitely not ready to make friends. <laughs> what the hell was that? So I ran back into the forest, but it quickly got dark. I ran to the edge of the island, lit myself a torch so I could wait out the darkness. But I quickly knew if I wanted to save Timmy, I was gonna need to survive on this island. So I prepared myself for shelter, chopped down some trees and gathered all the material and continued building throughout the night. By that morning, my shelter was complete and I spotted another stranger. Hello, my brother. You maybe seen my boy? He's got an egg shaped head, he's about 11. Goes by the name Timmy. But the stranger wasn't very friendly, nor did I even think it was human. So I decided to take him out. Yeah. Sir, I don't know what you are, but you need to eat a burger or something. Maybe I should check for a pulse. Yep, no, you're dead. Covered in blood, I decided to take a quick dip to clean myself up, made it back to the base, and then started making a fire pit so I could cook up some dinner. I found a nearby deer that was willing to volunteer his tribute, and once I chopped him up, I took the meat back to the shelter, lit my fire and cooked it up. This Bambi meat tastes good. I then went back to the beach, grabbed my buddy and threw him on the fire pit so I could collect some bones, and finally rest it up for the evening. Sir, where's my bones? You're supposed to give me bones. <laughs> I got a little bit too close. Stop drop and roll! And after I nearly foolishly burned to death, I finally had the bones that I needed, and I was able to craft myself up a spear. Feeling better defended, I went to search through some more luggage. What am I supposed to do with this? Throw cannonballs? Yeah! I then continued my search for Timmy and ran into more of the local inhabitants. But for now, I decided to stay clear of them. I still had no idea exactly who they were and how badly they could hurt me. So for now, I knew I needed to stay far away. But see, these cannibals were persistent. They followed me around hearing strange noises in the woods and often not knowing where the hell they were. I later learned they could even climb trees. This was terrifying. Sir, you just stay back. No one needs to get hurt today. I desperately needed to find some food and water, so I went to a nearby lake. But for some reason, I wasn't able to drink from it. Even going underwater didn't help. I then spotted a stuck lizard. Sorry, Mr. Lizard. I need the skin, okay? I wanted to cook up the meat, but I spotted a scout off in the distance, so I went into hiding. Once he finally went away, I proceeded to a nearby cliff. I was really in need of food and water, and that's when I spotted a cave entrance, and I knew the chances of finding some snacks and sodas inside were high. So I took the risk, climbed down inside, but boy was this place dark and creepy. It felt like I was climbing down forever. Finally I reached the bottom, and that's when I spotted something. This was Timmy's toy, as well as one of his drawings. Was he down here in this creepy cave? Timmy, you down here? I continued to search around, climbed up a rope, and went in with caution, because I was hearing something strange off in the distance. Mr. Cannibal, sir, if you can please not eat me, I'm kind of terrified of caves. Oh, what the hell is that? That's not a cannibal. What? No, 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 I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Oh, I need to get the hell out of here. The strange monster was hot on my tail, but luckily I climbed down and escaped the cave. What the hell was that? I still urgently needed food and water, and to make matters worse, the sun was setting. So I tried to rush to get back to my camp. Luckily I found some berries along the way, and after snacking on them, I continued to push forward. This was one of the coldest nights so far. 
I finally made it back so I quickly lit up the fire so I could defrost myself and once I was ready I went to bed. The next morning I snacked on my lizard and I wanted to make a more permanent solution for water so I made myself a water collector and went searching for some sea turtles. I finally tracked one down and slaughtered him up and collected his shell. I'm so sorry buddy, look at his face, he was so happy. Um, was this your friend? He's okay, I promise. Sorry, I didn't mean to split up your family. But it's for a good cause, I swear. I made my way back just in time for sunset and that's when I spotted a plane up in the sky. Help me! If only I had a flare gun. But with no means to warn them that I was down here, I went back to the shelter and finished my water collector, made a new campfire since mine disappeared. Whoa, I did not mean to click that. You okay? And after nearly breaking my new water collector, I finally started constructing the campfire and finished it up just in time for my first thunderstorm. Ah, uh, no point in lighting you. I decided to build myself a treehouse and that way I would be out of reach for most of the cannibals. But it quickly got way too dark so I enjoyed some dinner and to get out of the pouring rain I went to sleep. The next morning I woke up and continued chopping down some trees, collecting all the wood to continue building the treehouse. This was quite a tedious process, but it would definitely be worth it in the end. I added the final logs needed as well as the last sticks. All that remained now was some rope, but since I didn't have any I decided to work on some defensive spikes, place them down, had some dinner and since it already got way too dark, I went to bed. Night birdies, watch out for cannibals. The next morning construction on my wall continued. I gathered wood for the entire day, chopping down all the trees in my surroundings and then going around, collecting all the logs and slowly adding them to my wall. Things were coming together nicely, but I still needed a ton of trees if I wanted to finish it up. But I was quickly interrupted as I heard some cannibals. They managed to already track down my base. Not just one, but two of them and it was pitch black. I knew I was gonna need to fight them all. What are you doing? I just built this wall, you stupid. Oh, oh, it's like that, huh? Well, come get some then. It was quite terrifying that this time there was two cannibals at the same time, but I knew the longer I stayed on the island, the more intense the attacks would get. I constructed another fire and lit it up so I could burn the bodies of my unwelcome guests and then went for dinner and to get some sleep. Next morning, I placed down some more spikes and continued gathering logs. I also found out falling trees could break your structures and after after being stupid I replaced the spikes and continued constructing them. I knew at any point I could face another attack so it was vital that I get this wall done. I still didn't have rope and sometimes I had to wait outside since the sleeper worked on a timer and boy was it terrifying. But I survived another night and the next morning started constructing a wall behind my spike strip. I knew two layers of the fence would be a lot better than one. I continued gathering logs but I was still out of food and water and since it hasn't rained in a while I went to search for more luggage but found a ton of cannibals by the crash site so I decided to run to the village instead and search there for some luggage. But boy was this a huge mistake and I was now surrounded by cannibals. Completely out of food and water, I was outnumbered. This wasn't gonna end well. I tried to put up a fight but there was just too many and they managed to knock me down. But just as I thought I was dead, I noticed I was being dragged into the woods. I was still somehow alive. You see in the forest, you get one life. The first time you die, they drag you to a cave. So I woke up hanging from the ceiling of a pitch dark cave with nothing but my lighter and my axe below me. I was able to reach down and grab it to get myself cut loose. Finally I got my bearings and got up. I also managed to find a map to the island as well as finally some snacks, medication and sodas. Now that I was better fed and had a drink, I felt brave enough to search for some more luggage. I really needed to find a ton of snacks and sodas and the sense of desperation made me feel brave enough to go take on the cave dwellers. But man oh man did I underestimate how many of them would be in here. But I wouldn't let that stop me. These cannibals were a lot easier to kill. It's the blue mutant ones that are truly dangerous and deal a lot more damage. After I managed to take both of them out, I continued climbing deeper and deeper into the cave and it definitely paid off. I picked up what seemed to be an autopsy report as well as red paint and couldn't help but feel I was hot on the man's tail that kidnapped Timmy. After collecting a ton of sodas, I found a modern axe as well as some TNT. And by the next day, feeling better armed, I continued exploring the cave, feeling untouchable. Well, that's up until I entered the room of death. Wait, what the hell am I standing on? 
Is this dead bodies? <laughs> and not long after, I spotted something strange. So I lit up a piece of TNT and threw it forward, only to miss my target and try again. But it was quickly coming after me. Some form of mutant. And boy, was this thing fast. As it leaped forward, I was in serious trouble. I managed to finally get a hit in and felt I could take it down. Another direct hit. I knew it had to be close. I threw another TNT but unfortunately missed and decided to rush forward with my axe. I got hit by a 1-2 combo and nearly ended my life. And I needed to get the hell out of here. There was no more chances. Holy shit, that was close. So I popped some sodas, drank some meds and ate some flowers. And then went searching for the exit. I was definitely not ready for this. By the next morning, I finally made my way out of the cave and saw daylight. I squeezed through the exit and got jump scared by some bats. Oh, you son of a... And then rushed through the forest, hopefully not to encounter any enemies on my way back home. I continued finishing up the walls and decided screw to me, I was just gonna stay here in my safety. But for that I needed to up my log production and thus decided to make a log check. Carting back logs saved me a ton of back and forth trips and this really sped up the building process. And after another trip just before the evening I was nearly done. I then went to grab myself some dinner and went chasing after the squirrel. That is up until I spotted some night scouts. These guys had torches on them. They were clearly looking for me, so I needed to go into hiding. Alright, screw dinner. I'm definitely not going out there again. That's so freaking terrifying. And after a massive jump scare that nearly sent my heart into my throat, I was caught off guard by a cannibal. You who die for this. Oh, I nearly had a heart attack. I'm going to bed. I'm not coming out again. Sorry, Timmy, I tried. The next day, after enjoying some breakfast, I knew I needed to get this wall done. I didn't want to get caught off guard like that again. So I went out with my shed and collected more wood. But that's when a thunderstorm finally started. And I thought this time I would go grab another turtle shell. I located the remaining sea turtles and this time I didn't want to leave one friend behind. So why not grab both? But unfortunately you could only carry one at a time. So I started placing the water collector and finished building it and rushed over to grab the second shell. Just in time before the sun completely set. I made it back in the pitch black and constructed my second collector and then defrosted myself. And since I found arrows in the cave I decided to construct a bow so I could fight cannibals or from a distance. I also now had rope so I could finally get into my treehouse. This was definitely feeling a lot safer. I then had a look through my survival book at what I wanted to make next, but I had some unwanted company. Luckily it seemed like they didn't know I was up here, but I also wasn't able to sleep just yet, I still had a bit of a timer, so I cautiously waited in the hope that they would get bored and leave, and sure enough after some time they were gone and I was able to go to sleep. The next morning I filled in the back side of my base and once it was done I finished the opposite side as well. I decided to construct another tree platform so I could have some form of a lookout point and see those cannibals from a distance. By that evening it was done and I went up for a night's rest. The next day I started by constructing my staircase so I could have an easier way up. I enjoyed some breakfast and then went back to the main camp. I wanted to search for some more supplies. It's like I never learn, it's not a safe place to come here. As I heard their calls off in a distance, this time I wasn't backing off. So I went over to engage, to take on the chief. But I was quickly interrupted when a blue mutant came. Oh boy, tactical retreat, <laughs> tactical retreat. But my efforts were futile and I was followed, running out of stamina and forced to engage. But these mutants are seriously strong. As I tried to take on them both, the chief also got involved and I nearly died. I needed to retreat as I ran for my life through the woods. Hearing footsteps behind me, I somehow managed to get away. And once I recovered, I went back with my bow, took a more cautious, sneaky approach and the camp seemed empty. And I was able to go into the cave so I could restock on some dynamite sticks. I ran into some more easy cannibals and lit one on fire and that led to some inspiration. See I had some hairspray and boy they didn't like fire at all. So I converted my fun juice into molotovs. I searched around more corners of the cave that I haven't explored yet and found another drawing of Timmy. After hours of being lost I finally found the drop down to the dynamite room. By the next day I was stocking up and made my way back to the pit of death. But this time the mutant wasn't here. 
and I didn't want to lose my gap, so I quickly made my way out. I marked the cave exit and continued exploring. See, I haven't seen this side of the map yet, and maybe Timmy was here. I found another campsite and this place came with a ton of resources, which included a bunch of arrows. I was quickly losing daylight so I made my way to the beach when I spotted some containers, so I decided to set up camp and spend the night before going over to investigate. The next morning I made my way over to the containers. They were from some company called Sahara Pharmaceuticals. Right, what the hell are pharmacists doing on this island? I continued searching around and found some boxes with electronics in them and also saw another sea turtle and you can never have too many shells. I then continued my run along the beach when I saw a group of cannibals in front of me and this was one of the biggest groups I have encountered. They were easily 5 to 6 cannibals and I knew I needed to retreat. So I quickly made a run down the beach and found yet another campsite. This came with another pot but it seemed abandoned for decades. So I continued my stroll along the beach and that's when I spotted a yacht off in the distance. Tell me this is my ticket out of here. As I made it on board I found a magazine from not too long ago and also some strange lock room, photos of mutants as well as a milk cart that showed more missing children. Was Timmy not the only one? Megan? Who the hell's Megan? And since I already lost too much daylight, I had a sleepover in the yacht and the next morning decided I would set up camp on this side of the island. This must be the grave of the captain. I continued searching around for the perfect area and that's when I spotted a nearby lake. So I chopped down some trees and started building a log cabin on the top of the lake. But it got too dark to continue so I decided to rather make a temporary shelter, cook myself some dinner and then head off to bed. The next morning I got to put my pot to the use and collected some water so I could boil it. I mean I couldn't keep living off these delicious sodas. Since they gave energy I was fueled to continue the wood chopping for the entire day. I came up with a smart plan to drop them down from a nearby cliff then once it would start to get dark I would gather up all the wood from the bottom and continue building until it got too dark to see. But after a night's rest I was back at work continuing the construction of my little log cabin and since this thing needed a ton of logs I chopped the entire day, dropped down the wood and continued constructing, nearly making it halfway through by the end of the day. I then went out to grab myself some dinner. Oh, you're just showing off now. <laughs> Look, I'm a fast lizard. I continued chasing the lizard and he led me to the beach. That's when I spotted some scouts off in the distance. Over here you see the hunters and gatherers on their way back. But since it got too dark, I decided to give up on dinner and made myself another temporary shelter for the night. And the next day I was adamant to get the log shed done. That is until I had a little bit of a miss stepping. Oh no, please don't die. <laughs> I went back up to drop down some more oh, again. <sighs> oh. and after logs nearly found me to death even a second time I continued construction and by that evening I finally finished the cabin but I had no way up so I made a shelter, killed a bird and had it for dinner. The next morning I started building my staircase and then something strange happened. What the hell's happening? Oh it's a little bird, yeah. Yeah, I'm like Snow White now. But get out of here, I'm busy building. And then finally I managed to get it placed down and went to gather up the logs. Chopped down some more trees and continued building. I was just one log short. But on my way to it, I spotted a scout. And there's quite a terrifying feeling if you're out in the dark without a shelter. So I took refuge near my cabin and waited out until the light. But that's when I spotted a log on the edge. I had missed one. Just the piece I needed to complete my stairs and head inside. Alright Mr. Cannibal, I don't know if you're out there, but I, I, I please want to have a nice relaxing evening. Please don't come welcome me to the neighborhood tonight. The next morning I enjoyed some breakfast and went out on exhibition, collecting some lizards along the way so I could skin them for some more armor. I had come to learn that I had missed the torch on the very first cave that I went to. Which way's camp Bambi? It's this way, yeah? I took shelter by my old camp for the night and the next morning enjoyed myself some more of the lizards I collected. Finally I was getting close to the cave and was looking for the entrance. I finally managed to discover it and made my way inside. Now I knew there was a mutant waiting for me. You know the scary one from before? But this time I was a lot more prepared and I definitely needed that flashlight. So I tossed the flare and got ready to engage. I quickly whipped out my dynamite as the mutant was quick on its way. But before I could even light it, it had reached me and I was in serious trouble. I tried to make a run for it but it was right on top of me. So I tried to jump down the rope and luckily it followed after. At least now the mutant was separated from the other cannibals. So I made quick work to take them out using my molotovs and once they were dealt with I got the TNT ready and threw it down. 
first hit direct as I lined up my final piece of TNT, hoping this would finish the job. But unfortunately, he was still alive, so I took a shot in the dark and managed to land it, get myself some creepy armor, and the panic situation calmed down. That's so gross, but also awesome. Now that the cave was clear of threats, I continued searching, searching around for the torch that would make my journey so much easier. Oh, money, 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 give me. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of cash. I also found some watches and was able to make bombs. I found a katana and finally tracked down the torch. Went to burn all the bodies of the mutants that I killed so I could start working on some bone armor as well. But this cave was one of the biggest ones yet. It seemed like it was never ending. I heard some creepy mutant noises and knew I had no TNT. I went a different direction in the cave and spotted some strange drawing and led me to another location where I found TNT as well as a massive pit. How the hell am I supposed to get down there? But since there was no other way out, I was forced to go back and fight off the mutant. This one was an armsy. It had a ton of arms and I'd never seen them before. I didn't know if it was much stronger, so I got to work throwing my TNT, landing hit after hit, but eventually running Running out. I was down to my final stick, and after missing, I was forced to use my Molotovs. Here, Mr. Mutant, Sarah got a surprise for you. <laughs> That's so freaky. Get away! But luckily, I was able to land the final shot needed, and the mutant went down. So I went over to harvest the body and collect some more creepy armor. Nearly out of weapons, I was forced to continue deeper. I was way in too deep to turn back now. And when I ran into some mutants, I knew I was in trouble. Nope, not that direction. Pushed even deeper into the cave, I was just hoping and praying that there would be another way out. I ran into some more company, but this time there was no other way to go. So I was forced to engage. Did he just say fire? Luckily, the easy kills led to even more bones and I could continue expanding on my bone armor. And I was nearly full. I then found another strange note. These kids have been missing for ages. Where the hell was I? I managed to find a chainsaw and man, was this going to change my farming. Finally, the cave started leading me up, but it led to a dead end since I didn't have a climbing pick. Luckily, there was another direction and I was able to throw down a bomb and blow my way through. Continuing deeper into the cave, Climbing down yet another time and then found a strange picture. X marked the spot. I continued my search and led to a cliff where I saw some enemies below. So I threw down some molotovs and once I ran out, I switched over to my bombs and blew them to kingdom come. Now that the coast was clear, I made my way down. And that's when I discovered a massive pit. And luckily there was another way up that also revealed the climbing pit. And I was able to start climbing my way out of the cave. Or at least so I thought. I knew I had to be close to an exit, but of course some cannibals were standing in my way, and since there was a lot of them, I retreated back to the wall, and once I climbed up, I managed to get half of them separated. I went back to slaughter the other half, and the katana made quick work. Once they were dealt with, I made a quick campfire to burn up the bodies, I to navigate my way, which was the best direction out, and made some more bone armor before I went out. I stood on the high ground and shot the ones down below, and once they were taken care of, I explored the other side. I was forced to climb down, but a cannibal followed shortly after. Oh, what the hell? This thing is in here with me. It can swim. Luckily, it couldn't, and after finding some snacks, I was ready to go out. So I jumped over the edge, climbed up some more ropes, and just as I thought I saw daylight, it was another section of the pit and another photo. This pit was really massive, but with still no way up, I was forced to go back into the cave. Luckily now, the ropes were leading to the top, and finally I had reached the outside, and I could finally take in just how massive this pit was. Gosh, I hope Timmy's not down there. But nightfall was upon me, and I had to rush through the forest in the hope I wouldn't run into cannibals, and finally I made it back to base, and was able to call it a good night's rest. Man, that was just too many days in a cave, I don't want to see another cave again. The next day I started constructing myself an armor rack. I also wanted to improve on the fences, and chased a rabbit around that I wanted to eat for breakfast. Can you hold still please buddy? Here we go. Oh really? We're doing that again? Do I really look like Snow White to all you guys? Seriously, bird. Once I had the defensive walls laid out, I put my new chainsaw to good use. And this thing was amazing at chopping down trees. It went so quickly. I was able to gather a ton of wood and continued constructing throughout the entire afternoon. 
completely enclosing my little base. The next morning, I started to construct a platform. See, I wanted to build a zip line. That way, if I get caught off guard by some cannibals on the outside, I would have a quick way into base. The next day, I was able to finish up the tower and then also build some surrounding walls to cover the area better. I then constructed a new staircase to make things more comfortable. Finally, I placed down the zip line and finished constructing it. Once that was done, I collected the last remaining sticks that I needed, tested the bad boy out, and this thing was amazing. I then finished up my armor rack and decided to also place a zip line facing the other direction. That way I had a quick escape into a cave, but I ran out of rope. So the next day I continued constructing some more walls, fully enclosing off the base. I then went to a nearby cannibal village so I could borrow some rope. I mean surely they wouldn't mind. And with this I completed the zip line and continued working on the fencing, chopping down some more trees and finally had the final pieces. But that's when I heard some cannibals. Maybe these guys came to get their rope back? I don't know. All I know, I was creeped out, as there was a lot of them. Are you guys from the welcoming committee? I'm sorry about your rope. They seemed much more interested in staring at the rock, and by the next morning, they were gone. So I continued farming, and I noticed a tree fell on my zipline. That's probably what you get for stealing. I then started placing down another wall where the cannibals passed the previous night. That way at least they can't simply walk up to my base. And after some blood, sweat and tears, the wall was finally done. So I went relaxing. The next day, I decided I was gonna build myself a watchtower. Fine, this was a gazebo, but it would do the job. But this thing needed a lot of sticks and logs, so it would have to wait for the next day. But that morning on my way to lumber duty, I heard that I was being followed by a group of cannibals. You remember how I said the attacks would get more and more difficult? Well, this was one of the biggest groups I had to face to date. I made sure to stay close to my zipline, but I was clearly outnumbered. Luckily, I was wearing a ton of armor. This was also the day that I saw the cannibals could climb trees. But finally, I was able to get a shot in on one and shot an arrow to the chest on another. The rest of them seemed to vanish into the woods, so I continued burning the bodies to continue gathering all the bones that I could. At least I could make back some of the armor that had broken and finally ziplined back to base. Had a quick snack and grabbed my pot to fill with water, but that's when I heard something. One of the cannibals had followed me home and was now inside my base. You're not welcome here, sir. Please get off my property. The threat neutralized, I burned the body the next morning and finished my gazebo. Made a bird's house since apparently I was snow white and then made some more bone armor. I made a staircase for my watchtower but it was too dark to go out farming so I decided I would leave it for the next day. But that evening I got some visitors. I freaking hate those sounds they made. Can you just leave me alone? I waited around until I was able to go to bed since my timer hasn't fully reset yet. And finally, after resting up, the next day I was back to chopping down some more trees, dropping them down over the cliff, and then I noticed I had company yet again. And this was another big group of cannibals. The attacks were definitely getting more frequent. As I started pelting them with arrows, they seemed pretty much unfazed and just continued marching forward. One got a little bit too excited, but I could simply step back and fire my arrows. I then lined up the perfect headshot, and this would send all of them running. Oh boy, you scared of that now, hey? But of course it was too good to be true, and they made their way back. And it took me some time to realize my arrows were up and I was shooting blanks. So I switched over to the katana to finish the job. Piled up the bodies to make a bonfire, but some more of their friends came. So I had to fight them off as well. I was in dire need to have a snack. Luckily I was able to kill them all off, made some more armor, meet, 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 meet. <laughs> I'm going crazy, and then finished off my staircase just as a massive thunderstorm broke out. I then built another wall so that way if someone followed me inside, I would at least have another line of defense. At this point I was feeling a lot more confident about my base. I then dropped myself down a water collector since the pots were just not fast enough. And then remembered about my picture of X marked the spot and I recognized the tree nearby. I thought I could make it in time but it got dark way too quickly so after taking shelter at the yacht, I made it to the tree the next day and searched around. That's when I spotted the strange hall that allowed me to place down some dynamite. Yep, yep, I knew it, I was too close. <laughs> and this revealed parts of a flintlock pistol, a true game changer. I also remembered I still had a sun out there and it was probably time to go cave hunting yet again.
I was almost immediately met by company when I dropped down to the bottom as I heard cannibals running. I quickly made work of swinging around the katana. I am Samurai Kruger, fear my wrath. Luckily they were quickly dealt with and I made another campfire to burn up some more bodies. So I made some more bone armor and then spent the rest of the night searching through the cave for where I needed to go. By the next day I encountered even more cannibals so I lit them on fire and I really started to love the hairspray. But what I don't love is when I set myself on fire. Has this ever happened to you playing the game? Comment down below. I then continued to turn the corpses into armor and once that was done continued exploring throughout the cave. By the next day I reached a massive dip with water below and that's when I saw the rebreather, another key item to completing the game as it allows you to swim underneath water using air canisters for longer dives. I then found even more candy and although I wouldn't typically show me killing babies, this was my 100th kill in the game. I then continued with some more diving, leading me deeper and deeper into the cave. I had no idea where this cave was leading to, but I found a very strange door. It was the first time seeing something like this. It required me to place down a ton of rocks and that way it would open up. I don't know why I have this feeling this thing's gonna close as soon as I walk through. But that wouldn't even matter as this cave had another exit. I found some more strange pictures as well as a book and then continued diving further and further until I finally found a rope that I was hoping would lead to the surface. But unfortunately it didn't, it was yet another dive. And knowing it was nearly night time, I was terrified as to where I would come to surface. If I was on the wrong side of the island, it could be a huge struggle to get back. Oh where the hell am I? I'm nervous. Oh wait, what? What? I'm back at base! <laughs> That's so funny. Luckily one of my shortest trips back to base after a cave adventure. The next morning I wanted to reconstruct my zipline. I chopped down some trees being a little bit more cautious this time and after grabbing all the wood that was needed I now needed rope yet again. So of course I went over to the local cannibal walmart and sure as hell they were ready to collect payment. I swear <laughs> I paid for this. <laughs> Why can't I have no And after taking care of the cannibals, it was quite a bloody fight, so I went for a quick dip in the water and then saw one of them fake their death. Come here, lady. What the hell? Since when do they do that? Hey, lady. Lady, come join your friends. We're, we're just gonna have a little party. It's gonna be fun, I swear. Alright, fine. Since the one got away, I got ready to burn up the cannibal bodies. No bird scat. Don't sit on that. Also not that. That's disgusting. What's wrong with you, bird? You don't sit on cannibals. They're dirty and gross. Plus you'll get infected. Okay, fine. Now I feel like Snow White since I'm protecting the birds. After making some more armor, the sun was setting so I went to call it a night. And the next day I went exploring for some more flintlock pistol parts. I found yet another one and proceeded to light my TNT and cautiously backed away. Hopefully far enough away this time. Oh, what the hell again? What's the range on these things? I collected my second part and then went to explore these strange huts on the beach. Disappointingly, they had nothing inside. One of them at least had a little suitcase, but that was pretty much it. So I continued searching further, slowly making my way into the snow. But man, was it freezing. I constantly had to hold out a torch. And that's when I also spotted the night patrols, so I decided to rather set up a temporary shelter to pass the evening. The next day I found yet another flintlock location, dropped down my TNT and this time I ran for my life and finally didn't explode with it. Collected yet another part and then continued my search for Timmy, searching high and low all over the snow mountains. Timmy, Timmy you out there? It's freaking cold Timmy, I don't want to be here. I made my way up another mountain pass and that's when I spotted something off in the distance. The cockpit of the plane. So I immediately rushed over. I saw the captain was even still inside. So I immediately rushed in, hoping that there was a radio that I could use to call help. But unfortunately they were dead and there was no radio. At least I got a flare gun and went to spend the night here. The next morning, I finally finished off my search in the snow. At least I could rule out yet another area. Timmy, if you're out here, I swear, it's way too cold, so I'm sorry, you're on your own, bud. I found yet another campsite, as well as a flintlock pistol part location, and because the sun was setting, I decided to take shelter inside the cave instead.
But this cave was linked to the same cave network I had already been in, aside from the pool that I was able to dive down in since I now had the rebreather, but this merely led to a dead end, so I decided to stay in the cave and warm myself up to wait through the evening. The next morning I finally made my way out, walked to another cannibal village to gather some loot and continued my search for more flintlock pistol parts. One seemed to be quite close to my old camp, I decided to stick to cliff edges that way to avoid cannibals in the forest and finally made it there. Just as I was about to climb up, I spotted it. I had literally built right on top of it. So the next morning I enjoyed some squirrels and cautiously threw my bomb down in the hope that I wouldn't take the whole treehouse down as well. I collected another part and then ran to the main cannibal village so I could restock some supplies, including some arrows, some more TNT as well as electronic boxes so I could make some more bombs yet again. I then made my way back and by the next morning climbed out of the cave and started navigating back home. But along the way I was met by another group of cannibals and these weren't backing off. They attacked me in yet another group formation and this was wrecking my armor. So I tried to get away from them to stand on a ledge so I could take them on one by one. But every time I got hit from the back and my armor was completely shredded. Luckily they retreated, I was able to burn the bodies and just before sunset I knew I needed to get a move on. It was about to be dark and I didn't want to get caught up by the night patrols. Finally it got too dark so I decided to set up a shelter so I could sleep through the night. The next morning once I woke up I continued running forward, running into yet another campsite but I noticed something in the woods. It was a lake sea in the middle of broad daylight. What the hell was it doing out here? Things were definitely starting to get out of hand. I was now running for my life and hoping it didn't follow me back to camp. But I couldn't take the risk, so I started to swim to an opposite island across the water, safely making it across and going to investigate the shipwreck where I found some crossbow bolts. I then decided to look under the water for the front of the ship, and lo and behold there it was, and it also led to another underwater cave. So I cautiously made my way inside navigated through the underwater tunnels and just in the nick of time made it to the surface and this revealed a strange room that not only had the crossbow but some more building blueprints. I warmed up for the night and then made my way back. I was completely out of food and water and I knew running into cannibals at this point would easily end my life as I wouldn't have the strength to fight them all. So I swam over to yet another island, got bitten by a shark and finally made it across only to find another flintlock pistol location. So I proceeded to dropping down my TNT and ran as the hole would explode. Revealing yet another part, I now just had three to go. I tried timing the sunset perfectly so that once I would get back to base, even if there was cannibals, I could simply go to bed and cause them to despawn. And just as I thought the coast was clear, I heard some strange footsteps in the forest and also noticed a cannibal behind me. I had to take the risk and run into base. I don't know what those footsteps are. Oh no! Run away! I need to get to the zipline quickly. Oh, it's chasing me. I managed to make it to the zipline and started gliding down, but that's when I realized I was leading them straight to base and they were gonna tear through it. So I ran down the cliff. What the hell is that thing chasing me? Oh, that's definitely something new. Although I managed to escape to the water, the threat wasn't over and I was also starving. I needed to hunt for food, but also make sure I don't get jumped by a group of cannibals. So after taking down the deer, I got ready to place down a campfire but that's when I saw they moved across to my side. No, I see you. I don't know what to freaking do. I don't want to lead them to base. This is so terrifying. Just as I thought the coast was clear, I went to the top of the hill, but didn't feel safe enough to go into base yet, so I cooked my deer outside. I got jump scared by a lizard, and finally when it got dark enough and I was fed, I decided to take the leap and zip line down, hoping that at least this time my sleep timer would be right. I cautiously watched out the window and finally it seemed I was safe and decided it was about a good time as any to go to bed. Waking up the next morning, I knew my time was about to run out. I couldn't stay outside, things were getting way too intense and at this point I actually felt it was safer inside caves, at least there was a fixed amount of enemies. So I went to explore what I thought was the final cave, taking down all the enemies from the high ground blowing them up with C4 where I could, being careful not to blow up the mutants as I really wanted to get some more creepy armor. Finally when the coast was clear I made my way down and collected it. 
The next day, I went even deeper into the cave. It seemed like this place was trying to be protected off by the missionaries that had been here decades ago. After making some more armor, I proceeded deeper and deeper into the cave. There was a massive chasm and I was able to start climbing down until I missed my footing and thought I was gonna fall to my death. Ladies and gentlemen, the end of Kruger Ops. Oh what? I landed in water? Luck was definitely on my side, but cannibals still weren't. So I took care of two more mutants inside, burned up the bodies and finally I was turning a profit, gaining more armor than what I was losing. And by the evening pushing deeper into the cave, the next day I came to another section where I was able to climb even deeper down. I knew this would again be a massive cave to explore. I found a tent with a picture of some key card that I didn't know what the hell it was and ran into some more cannibals. Guys, let me introduce you to my friend. It's called Fire. After turning even more profit of bone armor, I went further and further into the cave. This cave was absolutely filled with cannibals and this was great. Well, that's up until the point where I came into this massive empty room. Well, empty aside from not one, but two leggy mutants in here. Not just that, there were some normal mutants as well. I wanted to get the armor, but I was quickly overran and I had to jump down the pit. I wonder if they'll follow me. Oh, oh that answers that. Once I reached the other side, I made a campfire to warm up and also spotted the modern bow, as well as some crates filled with arrows. After spending the night, this place was a dead end and I was forced to go back the next day. But the cannibals and mutants were nowhere in sight. Well, that's up until I reached a dead end and spotted them behind me. And not long after, the cannibals came as well. So I introduced him to my good friend named Katana. Once they were dealt with, I finally got a chance to test out my new bow. This thing was amazing. So after taking care of all the enemies in the cave and collecting my armor and making some more bone armor, I was ready to continue searching. This cave network was massive, filled with a bunch of water tunnels as well as even more cannibals. Luckily I was able to lead a bunch of them into the water as this was a group of six. Once they were few enough, I went in to take them down. I then cremated their bodies and continued searching found yet another room that revealed more mystery as well as a note that seemed to be from the red paint man. The next day I found another dead end but luckily this one I was able to blow through and of course I had my bombs with me cause boy was I gonna need them. The other side revealed a mutant and at least now I could test out my flare gun and with this gun accuracy doesn't matter. It sets off such a massive fire range that even revealed a second mutant. Luckily I was able to hide behind the cliff wall and every time they stopped burning I peeked around the corner and fired off another shot. But they quickly got onto my plan and one of them shimmied past and he was right on top of me. But at this point he already seemed badly damaged so I whipped out the katana and went to work. Slaying it in a matter of no time I tried the same with the second. But I got hit with a 1-2 combo and nearly ended my life. I seriously had to retreat. Once I finally got away, I took some quick meds and gave myself a brief moment to recover before returning to the fight with my flare gun. Finally, it went down. I could collect my creepy armor and explore further into the cave. The next morning, I found some more of the doors that needed stone for me to open them up, revealing some more mutants inside that were quick to take care of. Once I made them into armor, I found yet another door and that's when I walked across the bridge and found another toy of Timmy. It's another piece. Timmy? Timmy, you in here? Timmy? And after a bit more exploring, I got to the pit and waited for the next day before I started to search around. Found some more cannibals waiting for me and also the huge stomping thing that had come to my base earlier. Luckily, getting on an edge makes this guy super easy to take care of and I collected some more creepy armor. Found myself a nice suit, but I had to get it wet as I needed to explore some underwater tunnels. The tunnels lead to another section into the cave even further and deeper in, which revealed yet another note from Timmy. I knew he had to be close. They had to have come this way. As I was exploring the ultimate depths of the cave, climbing up some walls and running along some creepy hallways, I knew I was getting close. And then yet another drawing. Timmy was definitely trying to tell me something. It showed some strange door, but the thing is this door needed a keycard to access it, and I didn't have one just yet. So I started making my way back through the cave and that's when I found a picture showing the location of the card. I had missed one of the caves. So I swam back. I must say it felt a lot better running through this cave and just knowing there would be no more enemies inside. I had taken care of all of them. But I now need to get a move on. Timmy was inside that room for sure. 
and I needed to find that key card. Finally, I was making my way back up and out of the cave. It had taken me quite some time and it was already pitch black. So I made another shelter and slept through the night. The next day I made my way over to the cave. See I knew this cave but I thought it was the same as the one with the rebreather. I took care of the enemies down below and being cautious not to blow up another mutant as I really needed all the armor that I could find. So I switched to my molotovs but I misjudged my footing and I fell down in the pit with the mutant itself. Quickly switched to my flare gun and luckily it needed just one more shot and finally it burned to death and I could collect yet another piece of armor. I then also found the key card that hopefully unlocks the door as well as a camcorder and since I had a bunch of tapes I couldn't wait to watch some of them. I quickly rushed to get back to base and decided by the next morning I would check out all the tapes. It seemed one was from the helicopter, some were from experiments conducted on children and clearly things went wrong. The Sahara pharmaceutical company must have caused all these mutants to exist. So I knew I was going to stop them from experimenting on Timmy as well. I went out to collect the final pieces of flintlock pistol parts that I would need. I also tested my keycard on the yacht but it didn't work. So after enjoying the sleepover I went over to the final location, the last missing piece to the pistol. I threw my TNT and once it blew up collected the last part and assembled the gun. I would save this for the boss fight. I then had a strange lady run up to me and she was all alone so I decided I would take her back to base. But the other cannibals didn't like it. I got so many scouts following me along the path. But luckily I was able to navigate past all of them and made it back. But I fell behind my defensive wall and was forced to chop a section down. But my judgement was a bit off and I ended up taking down the entire tower as well as my zipline. You serious game? I wasn't even hitting that. Some more cannibals came back to try and collect their lady friend that was missing but see I had some plans for her for the next day so I decided to go fight them off instead. I was definitely running a bit low on armor so I definitely needed to stock up for what would lie ahead. Finally with them all taken down I had to put one out of his misery. What's the matter sir? You're in pain? I'm sorry your lady friend's mine now. With all the threads dealt with I collected my bones and then made all the armor. I then went to place down all my creepy armor on my armor rack saving them for the final fight. After resting up I spent the next day chopping down some more trees since I needed to repair the broken fence as well as my zipline. I threw all the trees down and started the construction of the missing platform as well as filling in the wall. Once that was done I placed down the zipline but I saw another group of cannibals came to take back their lady. Nope, nope, I'm not gonna allow you guys to ruin date night for me. The cannibals were definitely getting stronger, some even throwing fire but at least he would do a lot of friendly fire and send his friends retreating. I then constructed a small log cabin as I had some plans to stock up on bones but for now it was time to enjoy my nice romantic dinner with the lady. Alright, get dinner. I cooked this for you specially. I even fought a ton of guys over you. Alright, if you're not gonna eat your dinner, I'm throwing you in the fire. So after my day turned out disappointing, I spent the next day to start the massive grind. See, I wanted to build myself a gigantic bone farm. It was also high time I got the defenses really increased for my base. I decided I would build two layers of defensive traps. But of course, during all the farming, I constantly got interrupted by cannibals. At least I got to test out my traps as well and collect up on some bones. I then started building the back wall after facing some more numerous cannibals attacks. Finally, the wall was coming together nicely and I also filled in the door and made sure to get plenty of rest in the evenings as I needed to farm a ton of logs as I started the second layer of the traps. Deadfall traps that could fall on enemies when they walk underneath. So I continued gathering wood and completing the construction. Facing up some more enemies every single night as they tried their best to stop me before I could complete. I also linked the back wall to my base that way there was no place for them to run off. I also got to see the deadfall trap in action as one ran underneath. Finally I managed to finish up all the traps and then constructed another gazebo, I mean watchtower. And it took me another few days to get all the logs and sticks needed to complete the tower. But finally things were looking amazing. I was really proud of what I had actually built. I also spent some days stocking up some more candies and sodas as well as some more arrows for the bow. Finally going back to construction with all my leftover woods I decided to construct a church. I mean with all these cannibals I was killing I just felt it would be more fitting to actually have a service before I committed all these cremations. 
but of course facing even more building interruptions from cannibals, but at least my traps were working great. I was collecting a ton of bones while I was chopping down some trees. Come here, cannibal. <laughs> what did you get? Constantly resetting traps and continuing building. Finally, the church was done. I had a brief look inside and this place looked awesome. I definitely felt a bit more comfortable if I brought Timmy back. At least we would have a safe place while we wait for rescue. I then also made one final stop by the main camp to collect more sodas as well as fill up on TNT before resting one final night in my very first camp where it all began. And now ladies and gentlemen sit back as we head into the final stretch of the video. I made my way back to base for one final bone grinding session, waiting for cannibals to arrive and then taking them out. Once I had all of them slaughtered and burned the bodies, I had a full backup set of armor. And with that I made my way back to the cave. This time I had the key card, and to my surprise when I made my way down, the enemy still didn't respawn. This was awesome, I could simply cruise through the cave, not worrying about any threats. Finally I made it to the pit and I dropped down into the water tunnels, went through the final section of the cave and then made it to the door. Finally I could use the access card to unlock it, and boy was my mind blown. I did not expect to see all of this in this game, as I found more pictures of Megan Cross. I was slowly putting things together. She must have been the daughter of the red paint man. I then climbed into the cafeteria, stocked up on some coffee, sodas and candies and continued searching through the vents. Dropping down in Sahara Pharmaceuticals laboratory where they were experimenting on children before. Found the same place as the video where the people died from the mutant. Found a dead mutant as well as an alive one that I managed to take out with my TNT. I continued my search and found yet another box of crayons for Megan and wondered if she was still alive. And then finally reached the last section of the laboratory. I knew I had to be close to Timmy. Finding a very similar drawing from Megan and after which I went to the same room where the artifact chamber was. This was what I had seen in videos and once I opened the door my heart was about to break. No, Timmy. No. I'm, I'm, t I'm too late. Oh, my, my little boy. What the hell have they done to you? As I slowly pulled out his lifeless body and held him in my arms again, I placed him down on a nearby bed and said my goodbyes. Timmy, I'm so sorry, my little boy. I couldn't save you in time. I shouldn't have been building gazebos all this time. I should have come for you. But I then got a sense of hope. This machine seemed like it could bring back children to life. Was I able to resurrect Timmy somehow? As I started to connect him up, the lights went on. It was still working. I knew there was still one chance to bring back Timmy. But the problem was, I was gonna need a sacrifice. And I immediately knew just who it would be. The Red Paint Man. As I looked on the computer and continued searching around, finding a door saying it would lead to another artifact and then revealed a room where the Red Paint Man was. But I was too late. Someone had already gotten to him. And that's when I found a note that sent shivers down my spine. A device that could take down planes. That is exactly what had happened. Someone had used this device and that's why our plane had fallen down to the ground. I knew I needed to put a stop to this once and for all. So I continued walking through the hallways when I found some pathway of bloody footprints. And it seemed like it was from a child. Was that Megan? Had she killed her father? A hey, little girl, are you good? Oh, what the hell? But see, Megan was no longer Megan. In fact, the device caused her to mutate, revealing the final challenge of the game. Oh, what the hell? This is what I'm fighting? Are you serious right now? As the mutation took its final form, I knew I needed to get ready. This was gonna be my ultimate test. Luckily, I had the flintlock pistol. It took a ton of time to reload, but this thing deals massive damage. Oh, what the hell, it can knock you down. Oh, luckily it doesn't do a lot of damage. Alright, alright. We still got this. Come on. 
Boom. Ooh. No, 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 I don't want to get hit by one of those. The thing is, if this thing hits you properly like twice, it can easily end your life. All armor and all. And trust me, I'm not exaggerating. Just as quick as the mutants, a double hit combo can end your life. Oh, what? What? That was it? Luckily, I was victorious and I grabbed Megan's little body and I rushed over to Timmy as quick as I could, putting her inside the sacrificial chamber and watching it about to close up. But something was wrong. You see, this device needed a live sample. So I quickly checked on what I needed to do next and now had to find another sacrifice. Megan revealed the golden card which would unlock any Sahara industry door on the map. The facility then led into a cave that revealed a strange door leading to a whole pile of corpses. Once I made it to the other side, there was another part of this facility as well as an elevator that would lead me up. I had no idea where it would take me, but Megan's key card would get me there. As the elevator door revealed, I was now in the top of the snow mountains. What? Is this where it all comes together? Where am I? Okay. I went into the room at the edge of the hallway and that's when I saw the massive device. The same one from the video. And it led to a computer, leading to two choices. Either you can shut it down or choose the selfish path and rescue Timmy. But taking another look at the picture of my little boy, I knew I couldn't have this happen to another family. I chose the noble path and shut it down. I watched the device slowly power down over my head and I knew I would save so many more heartbreaks. I even blew up the computer control rooms to ensure this wouldn't get used again and then made my way down the elevator further and further into the facility. It led to yet another cave and as I went exploring it took me deeper and deeper down revealing a strange room that required a special key that seemed to be the second artifact that was mentioned in my notes. But for now, I needed to escape this place, blow my way out, and then finally I saw daylight again. As I climbed out of the cave, I heard a plane passing overhead, and I knew I had probably just saved the family from a ton of heartbreak. It would have been selfish of me to rescue Timmy at their cost. But it was a lot on my heart. Knowing I would never see Timmy again was really hard to handle. As I looked onto Timmy's little egg-shaped head and pulled out my lighter, lighting up the final memory of my little boy as I felt like I had completely failed him. I was unable to save my little boy, but I'm not going to be unable to avenge him as I used the golden keycard to open the room inside the yacht, revealing the special key that I needed to access the temple room. Finally making my way inside, seeing another bunch of corpses leading up to a strange mythical device. Grabbing it, I felt a sudden power in my hand. I didn't quite know what it was, but I would still figure it out. Timmy was never gone. He would always be in my heart. My little family, my little egg-shaped head boy. I knew I needed to make sure this doesn't happen again to anyone. Because you see, the device I held in my hand had the ability to either make cannibals run away or switching it over and make all of them come running. I would make it my life's mission to take all of them out. I never want to see anyone become a victim of these monsters again. As I went to work taking them all out one at a time, I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't sleep. I was going to end all of them even if that means the end of me, as I die trying. See, I didn't die. In fact, I got rescued. My name is Lieutenant Kruger Ops, hired for my unique survival skills to track down a eccentric billionaire. Of course, our healer went down, and we were now stranded on yet another island. And, as luck would have it, again this island would be filled with mutants and cannibals but I wasn't gonna let that stop us. You see, I'm a trained soldier now, part of an elite group specializing in missing person cases that would go where no other man on earth would, tracking down our target. Get down, son! Sons of the Forest, coming 2023.
And if you made it up to this part of the video, thank you so much for watching, you're an absolute legend. Here are some more to check out and thanks again to all my Patreons. I hope to see you here again soon.